I think it started uh, more than 20 years ago with the success of Warsaw Stock Exchange as a successful uh, hub for the capital markets and a transparent tool for international investors who could come and invest in Poland. And Warsaw Stock Exchange has become really uh, an international success and a major international hub for the Central European region. Um, uh, 15, 20 years later, the sort of uh, investing in startups has become fashionable and has become uh, more common. And this is, uh, I think, directly related to the success of Warsaw Stock Exchange. Definitely, and not only American, but also Asian, which I don't think uh, is fully appreciated yet, but uh, we just had uh, the visit of Chinese uh, president in Poland and I think the uh, contacts between uh, Polish and Asian enterprises will become m much more frequent and much more deep uh, in the near future. Um, obviously it is important uh, that uh, I could work in the US, I could work in New York on Wall Street and I can bring some of my past uh, colleagues, friends, investors, uh, companies that I've been working with, and I can get uh, them interested in what is happening in Warsaw, what is happening in Poland, and what is happening in the region, with the help of uh, Startup Hub Poland as a, as a foundation and, uh, and as an organization that is uh, investing and helping uh, young entrepreneurs grow their businesses, grow their projects, and grow their ideas. If um, a startup company in Poland cannot have potential to, to have an international success, uh, it's limiting itself to, to a rather small market, and a market that is still uh, um, not uh, quite prepared. To, to carry and, to, and, and to, uh, to, to carry a startup project to a success. I like startups that are um, not, from the very beginning, not limiting themselves to being a Polish company or being a Central European company. Uh, I like founders, uh, young people who have ambitions to become regional or international or global players. First of all, I'm looking at how they position themselves within the market that they think they're in. Sometimes they think they're in the life science market, but maybe they're into biotech or, or, pharma, or pharma market more than uh, they actually think. So I would like to see how well they know the segment or the sector uh, of the economy in which they position themselves. This is number one. Yes, how well they know their uh, environment, their immediate environment, how well they know their competition, and why they think they're better. What, what is their uh, advantage and what is uh, um, uh, the key they have to, to succeed against companies who are better founded, who uh, have better experience, and who sometimes have uh, already established position. This is, okay, yes. this is number one. Number two? Uh, number two is the whether we have a team that is complementing itself. It cannot be a one-person operation. I think it, it, the, a, a startup company uh, can become a success if, they, if it has um, motivated, uh, professional uh, and a visionary team that can implement the vision that can put into practice the vision that they have. So it has to be a team of leaders that complement each other and who are not necessarily competing against each other, but they're helping. And the factor number three, or this skill that number three that you find so important? Um, I think is to overcome early obstacles. If you do overcome in startups, everything could become a major obstacle. Rent, uh, salaries, access to the market, uh, uh, production of uh, uh, some trial products, for example. This could become a major financial burden, this could become uh, uh, an obstacle. If you can overcome successfully uh, 
early obstacles, early hurdles, then you will definitely uh, have more chances to become a global player, to become an international player and to really uh, get out of the early stage and startup stage into becoming a more uh, mature and more uh, established company.